Hey everyone, welcome to another Unity VFX particle tutorial and this time we're going to be creating this cool portal effect that you see from the game portal. And it's got a, a lot of cool elements to it. It's got, you know, the lights actually around the portal, it's got the particles going everywhere wild, and it's even got some fill in distortion which you may or may not want enabled depending on what you're going for specifically for your game. So if you want it enabled, maybe it's because, you know, the portal's not active, if you want it disabled, maybe because you want a clearer sight into whatever place you're connected to. And of course, it comes in both iconic blue and orange. So we're going to be just jumping right into it. So let's just stop this and start from scratch as usual. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new, let's disable this, create a new particle system. And I'm going to be using again textures from my ultimate VFX particle pack to speed things up. So the first thing we want to do is let's just turn the number of particles down to about two, set the speed to zero, lifetime to about two, and we don't want them, you know, being emitted like this, first of all. So we want them to be uh, emitting in a circle, around a circle. Actually, no, this one wouldn't even be emitting around a circle. It just wouldn't be moving at all. And let's just reset this and quickly move this up a little so it's about centered on our screen. Okay. Next, let's change the texture to a shockwave texture from my Ultimate VFX particle pack, and we want the additive effect, so let's see. Yep, this is it right here, okay. And you can see actually what this particle texture even looks like. So it's just basically this, uh, painted in Photoshop. Okay, so this is going to be the base of our portal, and we actually want it stretched out. So we're just going to stretch it like this, okay, 1.5. And right now it doesn't make any sense because it's just stretching all over the place. So what we're going to do is set the renderer, because it, we want it to be flat. We don't actually want it to be billboarding with the camera like it is right now. We're going to set this to mesh and set this to a like quad. Okay, there you go. Now it's just flat on the screen. Now, obviously, we're going to have to turn this down because it's way too bright, maybe like down to 32 or something. That's better. And change the color to something, you know, very portal-like, like blue. And change the start size to 2, so it's just over 1.5 maybe, just so it's massive and very clear and easy to see. So let's just hang, turn this down a little bit, right about there. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is set the color over lifetime. We're going to have it fading in and out, so we're going to fade it. First of all, set all the points to zero, and then somewhere in the center, around 50%, we're going to have it fade in and out. So it's going to be fading in and out over a lifetime of two seconds. Following that, um, let's see. Oh, we want some random rotation. So right now we've got this, right? You see the spikes or whatever you might want to call them, the shockwave trails. Uh, we're going to set this to random between two constants, negative 360 and 360. So now you can see it actually looks like it's an animated texture because it's fading in and out, the the, the different, in, uh, the number of those four particles being emitted uh, on the screen right now. And they're just kind of fading in and out between each other with random rotation. So it kind of looks like it's totally randomly animated or it's got some sort of uh, animated texture, which it doesn't. So it's a cheap way of doing that. And maybe I want to turn this up a little bit because this is actually way too dark, maybe something like that. Okay, and you can always pick another texture if this is too bright or something. This might be more appropriate, actually. This one right here. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the base laid down. Already, you know, it looks like a portal, portal, and if we wanted to make it orange, we could easily just swap the color right here. So next thing I'm gonna do is add those particles that are kind of being sucked into the portal. So to do that, we're gonna create, of course, a, another particle system underneath this one. Set the shape to a circle, okay, because we want the circle to be like that, more of an oval, but it's still flat, which is exactly what we want. Let's turn the start size way down, uh, set the lifetime to two, have it fade in and out again, so just remember to save these usually as presets, but I'm just going to quickly do the same thing again, and I'm going to set this to be a point sprite texture, so we'll just use this one right here. And we'll turn the start size way, 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 way down. And we also obviously want way more particles as well. So let's maybe turn that to turn that up to 100. And for now, let's turn the start speed to zero, just so we can see what they look like when they're being emitted. And they should be emitting from the edge. So now it looks like this. That's fine. Let's just set this to 1.5. Okay. 
And now you can see it matches the shape of the portal. So let's now turn the radius down to about that much, maybe 6.5. Okay, and have them start being sucked in like so. Now you can see actually if I use uh, whatever it was before, local, they seem to be a little bit stretched, right? Just because if I do this, the particle textures themselves stretch, which is not what I want. What I actually want is them to remain the same sh uh, same size per particle, but I just want the emitter to be stretching. So for that reason, I set this to shape, and I keep this at 1.5. Or actually, now I can set this to 1, because it's actually following the, the shape that of the parent. Okay, so let's turn this to maybe some bluish color that would make sense here. Obviously, you can add some variation, so you can just set two colors if that's better. Something like something like that. Uh, change the start speed. You can always modify the start speed as well. So let's make it negative one, negative maybe two five, negative. There you go. Although you might actually want it to be positive. That looks pretty cool too, in its own way. And we don't want nearly as many particles. We only had that many particles just so we could see clearer. Now we're going to duplicate this. And actually, we're gonna we're gonna name these because in another video I had trouble remembering what was what, so we're gonna call these embers, and we'll call these embers too. I don't know what the right name would be. I could just call them particles, but that's too straightforward. Next, we're gonna select the droplet particle texture. Again, additive. Okay, I could probably just do droplet three add right. So they're really well named. Uh, and then we'll just select that. And this time what we're going to do is, because we want the particles to face the direction they're moving in, we're going to set this to stretched billboard and set the length scale to 1. Okay. And then I'm going to randomize the lifetime to 1 and 2. And this one's actually going to be maybe a little bit faster. And maybe, well, smaller, but maybe there'll be more of them. Okay, like so. So you can see it's starting to sh uh, take shape. And this one, actually, I forgot to randomize the size a little bit. So random between two constants, randomization is always fun. Set this to maybe 0. 0.5 and maybe 1, I don't know. Right, that works. Okay, so next we're going to do those particles that we're kind of uh, emitting back and forth around the, the portal. So for that, um, I'm just going to... I'm actually going to duplicate this one right here and I'll just call this Outer Embers. That's a good enough name. And now instead of emitting inwards like this, okay, uh, I'm going to first of all actually just change this to enable noise on these particles. So you can see they're already kind of going all over the place. And instead of just, you know, this, I'm going to do negative 0.25 and 0.25. Let's see if that works. I don't know if these values will work. But now it's not just going to be emitting inwards, and give it a random, random direction. Okay, so they're going to be emitting all over the place. And then I'm going to just make them a little bit more visible by upping the start size. Okay, and going back to the noise module, uh, I'm going to turn the scroll speed up a little bit. Turn up this, the frequency. Turn down the strength so it's not so crazy wild. And you can see we've got what we had similar to before. Maybe turn this up to 100. Right. Uh, we can turn the start speed up to maybe 4. 0.4. See what that does. That's a lot of chaos. If it starts slowing down, just set it to stop so it stops um, simulating so farther out in time. And you can see how that looks now. Not bad. You can always change the color as well. I mean, if, I don't know, orange kind of looks good. I'm not sure. It's up to you, really, how you want to go around. Maybe we'll, for this one, we'll actually go for a very deep blue, almost purple. Uh, maybe not. Okay, so next we want to work on the fill because we've got the outline of the portal basically filled out. Uh, 
but we actually want the inside of the portal to be doing something interesting as well. And so for that, I'm going to create a new particle system. This one's going to be from scratch. Set the shape to, again, circle. Okay, set this to shape so it just you know, automatically fits in. And I'm going to change the texture to some sort of, we're going to do some animated smoke. So I'm going to set the, I'm going to select the additive animated smoke that I have. So let's just set the smoke add, right? So that should give me all the additive variations. This one will do. Uh, and this is an 8 by 8 sprite sheet. 8 columns, 8 rows. So I'm just going to set this to 8 by 8 and then stop moving around. I don't want that right now. And maybe around two seconds. Okay, so you can see how it's how that's going. Set this down way down to a different color. Turn this blue-ish. That looks what, too much. That looks close enough. And not emit from edge, but rather turn the radius down like so. I'm gonna turn the start size up to random between two constants, as usual. Turn the emission rate over time to four or so, and let's also have them fade in and out, so they're very subtle. So color over lifetime, fade in, fade out. Okay, so we've got our basic fill there. Yep, that looks good. And we'll just call this smoke. Next we're gonna choose Actually, we'll just move this up here, and we'll call this one Fire. Okay, so right now it's doing something similar, but we're just going to look up Fire Add. And we're going to choose this this texture right here. Right here. And it's currently just doing that because it's, it's actually just a sprite, but I have texture sheet animation enabled, so I'm just going to disable that. You can see that's what you get. And also back, uh, I'll get to that in a second, I guess. Start rotation random between two constants, so it doesn't look so uniform. Okay, there we go. Next, I'm going to enable uh, rotation over lifetime. And I'm going to set it to between negative 45 and 45. Let's see how that works. Okay, maybe we can turn that down a little bit to 25. That's better. Then I'm going to turn the start color down, and that looks not too bad. That looks good for a fill, I think. Going back to the smoke, though, I forgot to actually add the random between two constants for the smoke, so I'm going to do that right now. And there you go, so that's the, the fill. Uh, let's add distortion next. I'm actually just going to copy the smoke right here, and I'm going to pick an alpha distort texture. So, alpha distort from Ultimate VFX. I should get some values, uh, some material, so this has a distortion value of 1, 2, 5, 10, 100, 200, let's go for 800. So that's that's pretty cool right there on its own. But let's just, um, <clears throat> this is not a animated texture, uh, sprite sheet that is. So I can just disable this. And you can see it's fading in and out. Uh, I can turn this to white and turn the alpha all the way up, depending on the distortion level I want. So if I want it to be an extremely distorted uh, portal, then I could go for that, and I could change the start size to something like this, or man, yeah, that's too much. Turn this down. Okay, so we've got our distortion going, that was pretty simple. And we're also going to just change the sorting fudge for the distortion, so it's actually always on top of everything. So let's just change this to negative 32. Good, and we'll rename this to distortion. I think the last thing left for this portal is just the the light, and that's easy to do. So what we're going to do is create a... I'm actually going to duplicate the fire, okay, and we'll call it uh, Lights Particle System, Lights PS. And really, we don't need anything, we don't need this to actually even render, but all we need is the lights part of it, right? So we're going to select this. Uh, we need to make a light template, so we're just going to create a new light inside this particle system. Point light, every all the default values are fine, shadows are off of performance, and we're going to go back to the lights PS, and then just assign it. So we can actually rename this point light to light template so we don't forget. Okay, and then go back to lights PS, and then light template's already been assigned. Set the ratio to 1, so you can see what that does. Amount of particles that have lights that are attached to them. So we want all the particles that are emitted from this 
to have a light attached to them to a maximum of 20 or so lights. So let's turn this up. Okay. Simulate. There you go. Oh, the render needs to be on, but this can be set to none. There you go. Okay. And there you have it. So this one currently has, what, eight particles? That's probably too much. We don't need that many. We can maybe turn it down to about four. Or even less, depending on uh, what you're doing. And yeah, there's your portal. I think that was pretty easy to do. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy. Uh, remember, these textures are from Ultimate VFX Particle Pack on the Asset Store, which you can you know, just simply Google. It comes with a ton of textures, over 270 prefabs now. Version 2.6 is almost out. And uh, this prefab, including all the other stuff that you saw from before, the orange variation and whatnot, will also be available inside the next update. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.